Check. Praise the Lord, church. Come on and praise Check. the Lord. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Let's just give God praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been good. He's kept us all week long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're just going to go ahead and get started with a little praise and worship. Amen. Amen. How many know that he is the Lion of Judah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I need y'all to just don't stand, sit there and look at us. I need you to participate. Amen. Hallelujah. I need you to clap your hands and open your mouth and give God glory on today. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Help me lift him up! Hallelujah! Yes, God! Higher and higher! Help me lift him up! Hallelujah! Jesus will. How many know that Jesus will fight your battles? How many know that Jesus will be there when nobody else is there? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey!
you will fight your battles if you stay still and let the Lord have it. Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen. For I know Jesus Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and give God glory today. Come on and praise our God today. Thank you, Jesus. And because God <laughs> is the greatest power, <laughs> we shall never, never be defeated. <laughs> And because God is the greatest power, hey. right. we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never. Never be defeated and because God right. is the greatest power we shall never yeah. never be defeated. Listen I shall go I shall be I shall go in victory. Listen, no weapon formed mm. against me will ever, ever come to me. I shall rise, I shall be. I shall go in victory. No weapon formed against me will ever overtake me. Listen, I shall rise. <laughs> I shall be. I shall go in victory. No weapon form against me will never overtake me. And because, and because God is the greatest power, we shall, we shall. We shall never be defeated. Yeah. 
Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him on today. Hallelujah, because he's worthy. worthy. He's worthy. You're worthy. He's worthy of your praise. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands. Come on and lift your hands. Come on and worship him. Come on and give God glory. Hallelujah, because he's been too good to us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord on this afternoon. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Somebody give God some praise in the sanctuary. This praise team saying the devil is a liar. And we have the victory. God is exalted. Amen. Are there any victorious people in the sanctuary on tonight? Amen. We're about to celebrate Pastor Austin. But before we give him a standing ovation, can we give the king of kings and the lord of lords a standing ovation come on come on on this friday night can you open up your mouth and give god some praise come on open up your mouth and give god some praise i said open up your mouth and give him the glory give him the praise for this is the day that the Lord has made. Somebody turn me up in the monitors. So I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. David says it like this. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Come on, St. Paul. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, come on and bless him. Come on and praise him in the sanctuary. I promise you, you'll feel better after you praise him. David says it like this. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him be thankful unto him come on be thankful unto him and bless his name for the lord is good for the lord is good what type of church we have tonight for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures through all generations amen amen we come to give god some praise on tonight amen amen and we come to celebrate pastor taekwon austin on 10 years in ministry come on you can do better than that amen we come to celebrate this great minstrel this great musician this procrast this this amazing preacher of the gospel amen amen pronosticator you try to say big words and you get stubble sometimes amen <laughs> amen but we praise and thank god for pastor austin's ministry amen 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 i am privileged with this honor um to be the worship leader for this afternoon were you blessed by the praise and worship amen we praise and thank god for sister bridget amen and her amazing worship team we are going to have prayer we're going to jump right into the service amen because god is going to do something in here on tonight amen somebody amen amen we are tonight we're going to have we're going to open up with prayer from reverend ida osidolu followed by scripture from reverend mary simpson followed by the welcome and occasion from sister debbie stanley in that order amen every heart prepare for prayer amen the reason I say prepare for prayer because we want to go before his throne praise the Lord oh Lord my God how excellent is your name oh Lord my God how excellent is your name 
There's none like you, almighty God, because it was you who woke us up this morning. It wasn't the alarm clock, almighty God, but it was you. And almighty God, we just want to say thank you. We come before you this evening, Lord, in thanksgiving. We come to you, almighty God, in praise. But in all things, we come to you, almighty God, in humbleness. Because there is no one like you. We thank you, almighty God, for your blessings, for your grace, and for your mercy. We thank you, almighty God, for your anointing and for your appointing. Almighty God, you've blessed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone who has come out this evening. But more than that, Lord, we thank you for blessing Pastor Austin. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for putting him in a place in our lives that we can see the manifestation of the Most High. For Lord, we're standing on your promises. And we know that your promises is yea and amen. And Almighty God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Because in the midst of all of the struggles, in the midst of all of the trials, in the midst of all of the heartaches that some have even faced today, Lord, we can still come and say, thank you, Lord. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you have sent someone to pray with us. You have sent someone to teach us. You have sent someone to love us. You have sent someone to care for us. Because, Almighty God, you have done all those things for him, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for the manifestation. Praying and asking, dear Heavenly Father, that you touch the speaker of the hour. Hallelujah. The anointed and the appointed one. Tender Father, we thank you for all things that's taken place here this evening. But most of all, we thank you for your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you, Almighty God, that we can lift up our voices and give you the praise because of Jesus the Christ, that there is no devil on this earth or in this earth who can take away the joy that you've given us. So, Lord, we thank you. Bless those who may be feeling a little sick, Lord, but we thank you for the healing power of the word. We thank you, Almighty God, for touching all the voices we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for touching all the movement. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. And we're thankful, Almighty God. We thank you, Lord. Be with us. And when we leave this place, let us not forget the one who is, was, and is to come. Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the, Praise the Lord. I'll be reading Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 32. I mean 39. Romans 8, verse 28 through 39. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who had been called according to his purpose. For those God was known, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not inspire his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God had chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemned? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also in the sea for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, feminines, or nakedness, or dangers, or sword, as is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We consider as sheep to be consumed. No, in all these things we are more than comfort than those who love us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creatures will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. That is good news. I don't know about you, but nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Amen. That is a good place to praise. Amen. We're going to continue in our service with the selection from the First Baptist Choir. Amen. It's First Baptist in the house. Amen. You all come on down. Let's give God some praise for this choir as they come. Following the First Baptist Choir, we are going to go into a moment of reflections. I am so sorry. Amen. You all can come on down. We're going to have Sister Debbie come and give us our welcome and occasion. Amen. Amen. I am so sorry. Good evening, everyone. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome and to thank you for your presence on this evening. As we celebrate 10 years in ministry of our beloved pastor, the Reverend Tyquan Austin. Amen. Amen. We are grateful to God that he answered the call to ministry 10 years ago today and that the Lord has made it so that he would be the eminent pastor here at the St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. God is an awesome God. And he makes no mistakes or is short of his promises. We ask that you would continue to pray for us as a body of believers and that God would continue to give Pastor Austin wisdom and knowledge to lead the people of God here at St. Paul. We love you, Pastor. Be blessed with many more years in ministry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We bring you greetings from First Baptist Church of Salisbury, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. Lewis Watson, and our first lady is First Lady Talana D. Watson. Hallelujah. We give honor to whom honor is due. We thank God for the house. We thank God for the praise and worship team. You all, we don't need to do nothing. Y'all did everything. We don't need to do nothing. Oh, Lord. But we thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to use this mic. Hold on one minute. We trying, y'all. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah, Lord. You are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I You've been so good to me. I want to sing it one more time. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, you've been so good to me. Good. You've been so good. You've been so good. 
so good. Oh, you are good. Oh, you are good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. Oh, I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my can't life. Can't praise you enough. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Even if
Has the Lord been good to anybody in the sanctuary? Come on, somebody just slip your hands up into the air and just worship him. If he's been good to you, he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. We praise him and thank him for being a great God. Amen. 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 We are going to continue in this worship service. Have you been blessed so far? Amen. In this celebration of 10 years. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Sister Debbie, for letting me know I missed you. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. We're going to continue in this portion of the service in reflections at this time. We're going to continue in reflections. And let me read that order off on this morning. I've been given a specific task. Amen. So I'm going to stick to it. Amen. From St. Paul. Amen. Sister Mary Candy will be speaking on behalf of St. Paul. From, Swiss, from Swift Street, Amy Zion Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Austin's first church, Sister Patricia Presley, will be speaking on behalf of Swift Street. Swift Street, excuse me. The Amy Zion Brothers, myself, Pastor Bimbo, will be speaking on behalf of Pastor Austin's Amy Zion Brothers. And then for family, Pastor Austin's mother, amen, Sister Marquita, will be speaking on behalf of the family amen so you all can come in that order good evening everyone I'm usually in the background. I'm not good for being up front. Okay. On June the 6th, we got a, a good beginning, new beginning, priceless. I don't know what all to say, but I'm going to say this. The Lord had blessed us richly with a gift more precious than gold. The Lord, his place inside of us can't be brought or sold. The Lord had blessed us richly through our pockets empty now. We feel a certain gladness and wealth that he adore. The Lord blesses us richly with children, spouse, friends, family. Our heart sings gratefully praise. As days come to the, to the end, the Lord had blessed us richly. And you will be richer, too. Just invite the Lord to walk along and talk along with you. Don't take nothing for granted. Nothing for granted. And stay humble. The Lord will carry you a long ways. Praise God. I am honored to be here today to celebrate my pastor, my wonderful pastor, Pastor Taquan Lamar Austin. All the way from Greensboro, North Carolina, I bring you greetings in Jesus' name. Well, St. Paul, y'all have an angel. When I got the um, call that he was leaving Swift Street, oh my God, it was the same day that I lost my aunt. So I was already emotional. Um, it was a hard day. But I called Pastor Austin and he came from the mountain down to the nursing home. And anytime I need him, he's there. So I'm Pastor Austin. To God be the glory for this opportunity to stand in front of you guys today. Um, I told Mama, I ain't going to cry because I know Pastor noted this ain't Miss Trisha. Miss Trisha don't do this. Miss Patricia behind the scene. 
but I want to celebrate you in your ministry. I am honored to have served under him for five years at the Sweet Swift Street Amy Zion Church in the wonderful city of Greensboro, North Carolina. He is willing to serve his outstanding personality and angelic versatility of music. He, um, I'm nervous. Um, he's a powerful preacher, a powerful prayer, and a wonderful pastor and a wonderful friend if you need him. Um, so I'm going to say y'all take care of him. You know my address, my phone number. Anytime you need me, you know I'll be there. I got up at 2 this morning. First of all, I worked 10 hours yesterday. Got up at 2 this morning and hit the road. When Miss Mona told me, Miss Patricia, I need you there, she knew I was coming. Pastor, I love you. St. Paul, take care of my wonderful pastor. I love you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. I know Pastor Austin spoke at my three-year appreciation a few weeks ago. So now that I got the mic. <laughs> well, I'm going to say all good stuff. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I praise and thank God for Pastor Taekwon Lamar Austin. Many of you all know Pastor Austin was my pastor for almost a whole year while in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I've learned so much from him. A very humble young man can sing, can preach, can he's, he's a musician, can play all type of uh, instruments. And he, he remains humble. I've had the privilege of knowing Pastor Austin from college um, for the last 10 years, actually. I met him literally 10 years ago, August 2012, um, at, at Livingstone College, amen, and we all matriculated, amen, under the maple and the oaks, amen. We have many preacher friends, pastor friends um, that we have matriculated at Livingstone with. They wish that they could be here. There is a video that is prepared, pastor, for you, so you will see that, uh, I guess, after service, but like any preacher group, they've given me a dissertation to read, and so I'm going to read this to you. It's a, it's a little sermonette, but I'm going to read this to you on behalf of the brothers, and I can't speak on the behalf of them, but, but we love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We're so proud of you. Keep on going, and your ladder shall be greater. Amen. Here is the, the sermonette. Greetings and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. But the slight, but the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. <clears throat> to the Reverend Taekwon Lamar Austin, we pause in devout reverence and celebration. Today we rejoice with you as you mark 10 years in the preaching ministry. From Leland, North Carolina to Salisbury, Maryland, we have been witness of the hand of God on your life. Time will not permit us to document all the ways that Pastor T.L. Austin has impacted our lives. However, we, the Reverends Joshua Walker, Daquan Bimbo, Michael Frencher Jr., Lloyd Nivens V, William D. Armin, Xavier Daniels, and Minister of Music Jabri Walker would like to take this time to characterize our brother as the following. T, trustworthy, transparent, and truthful. Y yearns to serve God in the spirit of excellence. Q, Kuintu Inchu, musician and psalmist. You, I think I said that right, understand into each task. A allows the anointing of God to flow, and N never quits until the job is done. 
we close with the following quote from our, from encouragement from J. Cole. Never give up until you've given out all your best. It's better to fail trying than wondering what could have happened if you tried. Humbly submitted your brothers, the Reverend Joshua Walker, the Reverend Daquan Bimbo, the Reverend Lloyd Nivens V, the Reverend Michael Frencher Jr., the Reverend William D. Armin, the Reverend Xavier Daniels, and Minister of Music, Jabri Walker. Congratulations on 10 years in the preaching ministry. say that it is an honor for the Lord to give me the responsibility of being, I'm going to refer to him as Ty, as, to, as Taekwon's mother. And it is even a greater honor to watch him grow, to grow from the little boy from Leela, North Carolina, who lost his dad at five years old, to become the man, the pastor that he is today. <laughs> It was somewhere around 1997 or 96 at a Christian education at an annual conference in Goldsboro, North Carolina. I tried my best to say, Taekwon, can you sing? Can you sing for me? Do it for your mama. But no, he wouldn't do it for his mother, but for his grandmother, he did. And he was going to walk all around heaven. <laughs> it was the first song that he led, and he hasn't stopped since. And around Leland, when people walk up to me now, I, I, first I was a little selfish, but now every time somebody, how's my boy doing? They don't say, well, how are you, Miss Marquita? It's how's my boy doing? In the nail shop about a month ago, I was sitting there waiting to get my nails done, and I called him afterwards. And there was a young lady there, and she was getting her nails done, and she kept turning around, and she kept looking at me. I was like, you know, what's going on? Then she finally says to me, are you Taekwon's mother? And I said, why, yes, I am. Well, we were good friends when we were in high school, so I called him up afterwards to tell him. I said, Taekwon, I said, I met this young lady in the nail shop, and she said you guys were good friends, and he chuckled at me like, <laughs> Ma, I don't know who she is. <laughs> but, but around Leland and the Wilmington area, I'm, I'm Taekwon's mother. At a district meeting just last week, someone walked up to me and said, okay, I want to hug the mother of my son. I said, okay, okay. So I've learned to share him, that I have to share him with the world, apparently. Taekwon, the joy I have with you began in the womb. It began on September the 29th on 19, of 1991. Your ministry at, also began at Somerville AME Zion Church, your home, home church on the Wilmington District of the Cape Fear Conference. I just want to say that. I just want to... It is beyond description of who you are. You are a great and exciting, you're on a great and exciting journey. And I'm praying for God's hand to continue to be upon your life and your ministry. Continue to preach the word. 10 years ago, this day, you like Timothy said, yes, you would proclaim the message of the Bible, whether it was popular or not, and whether it was convenient or not. There will be many sermons you will preach and many lessons you will teach, but never stray from the word. Don't replace best with good. Ministry can be tough. Continue to love the people. You must love the people you have been called to serve. Love them unconditionally as Christ loved us. The local church is an imperfect but wonderful gift from God. Ten years ago, this day, you would, who would imagine, who 
could imagine. You have so much more to offer. Every step you've taken thus far has taken you higher and higher. He who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. There is more that he requires of you. I love you, my son. Amen. Somebody get past us some tissue. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We praise and thank God for each and every person that brought a reflection on this afternoon as we celebrate Pastor Austin. Amen. I see some clergy in the house tonight. If you're clergy, if you just wave your hand. Amen. We got Pastor Lewis Watson with us on tonight. Amen. Amen. We praise God for the St. Paul Amy Zion Church staff. Amen. Reverend Dr. Leon Copeland. Amen. Amen. The former pastor of my church. Amen. The Mount Hope Amy Zion Church. We got our presiding elder of the Eastern Shore District with us. Amen. The Reverend Dr. William E. Kelly and the Reverend Dr. David McLendon is with us. Amen. And the preacher of the hour, Reverend Dr. Darren Mitchell. Amen. All the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. Amen. We're going to ask Dr. McClendon to come up now, and it is giving time. Amen. Somebody get excited about giving. Amen. We're going to be a blessing to this preacher. Amen. For 10 years. Amen. Was there any other clergy? I don't want to miss one. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Bimbo, and to all of you, and I greet you in the matchless and marvelous name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. If I was celebrating 10 years in the ministry, I would have to go back about 40 years. <laughs> and I'm serious about that because I've been in ministry for almost 50 but if I had to go back about 40 years, somebody invested in me. And this young preacher, my friend, my brother, my North Carolinian, is also celebrating 10 years. And we want to invest in this young man. Not just because he's from North Carolina but because God has placed a special anointing on his life. And he is going somewhere. So this afternoon, we are going to help him get there. So I'm asking, I'm asking for those of you, don't start writing your checks yet because you don't know what I'm going to say. I'm asking for each of you to invest in this young man with an offering tonight of $100. Is that hard to do? Come on, somebody can say amen. Because I'm going to do it. Because almost 50 years ago, somebody invested in me. And look at me now. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. God can do amazing things when we get behind those that God has anointed. I'm going to ask my wife to fill that check out for $100. His name is already on it. Make it out to Taekwon Austin. And the church also have Giblify. So you can stroll down Giblify. You can find the St. Paul Amy Zion Church here in what 510 Delaware 410 oh I was, I, I was thinking about somewhere else 410 Delaware Avenue <laughs> and when it comes up you can make your giving there if you're not giving it tonight and he has a cash app as well Taekwon Austin so we want to make sure that everything gets to him 
So we're going to ask you to stand, and you all are coming, right? And those of you will come up the center aisle and go back to the window aisles, back to your seat. And we're going to start from the rear. If you would do that, if you will all stand, and starting from the rear will you bring your offerings. Amen. Amen. Let us, let us pray. Let us bless this offering. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for the offering that we have received. And may it be used for the investment in this young man whom you have called to do your will. And God, we give you honor and we give you glory. And we thank you this evening for those who gave. For these and all thy blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and in his name we pray, amen. Amen. Have you been blessed so far in service? Amen. Anybody in expectation of a miracle in the house? Hallelujah. Amen. It's preaching time. Amen. It is preaching time. Amen. And this is a preacher's preacher. I remember my first time hearing him at 12 years old. I was in Mount Vernon, New York, and he preached up something. And so get ready, get ready tonight. And to introduce, <laughs> and to introduce this phenomenal preacher, we're going to have our honoree introduce him on tonight. Amen. And so when we call our honoree forward, I want us to ask if this is one of our favorite athletes or whoever. Let's, let, let, let's give him a standing ovation, amen, and let's cheer as Pastor Taekwon Lamar Austin comes forth at this time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm going to bless his name. How about you? Come on, just turn to your neighbor. Keep your mask on. Tell him, I'm going to bless the Lord tonight. I done had a long week. I'm going to bless him tonight. Come on, where, where are my folk that don't mind blessing him on a good Friday night? Come on, you were getting ready for the club, but you're in the house of the Lord tonight. Can we just give God praise? I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. My, 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 my. Y'all didn't come to praise the Lord. I just wish I had some folk that just think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. I'm celebrating 10 years tonight. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some losses, but I'm still here. Anybody can just praise the Lord. Come on and open up your mouth and give God the glory. Yeah. Ain't he all right? 
I said, ain't he all right? I'm not preaching tonight. It's a preaching house. It's a preaching room. I don't have anything written down, but I'm going to speak from the heart. Um, the first time I met him, you know how you meet somebody, but they didn't meet you. <laughs> Here it is. Let me set the scene. I was, on, I was getting ready for my first midwinter meeting 10 years ago, December, and um, trying to get my way down there because I knew my little 95 Buick LeSabre wasn't going to make it down to Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I had to go on YouTube. I, I like to go research and go see videos go on, you know, online because you can just find about anything. And so I, I, I typed in, I don't laugh at me, and I'm just being honest with y'all. I typed in Amy Zion shouting because I, that flew over some people here. And the first video that popped up was 2000, was it 2008 General Conference? Um, and I saw this man um, preach, squeeze me. And he went and squeezed the church. And all he went through his his uh, his celebration and I met him and I saw him in Atlanta, Georgia. And the first thing I said, and I don't charge it to me, Doc, um, I said, I thought he was taller than that. I thought he was taller than that. Because when you put on a robe, pastors, y'all know it would make it look a little taller, just a little taller. Um, and so went through that, ended up playing. Um, I was playing organ at White Rock in Granite Quarry, North Carolina, and I. Got an opportunity to play in High Point, which is on the Greensboro District, which he is the pastor, leading pastor on the Greensboro District, which I was able to really see him and glean from him and how he handled the business, not only from the pulpit, but how he handled business um, as a leading pastor. And I said, I got to be like that. And so I understand that it's OK to be a copycat as long as it's a cat worth copying. Amen. Amen. And so um, it has been an honor and a privilege, matriculation, and um, through conference studies and district studies and all of that stuff you got to go through before they even put a call on you and call your reverend. Amen. Um, but being able to see him and sit under his preaching and pastorship. Amen. Because a lot of people can sit under the preaching, but can you sit under the pastorship of leaders? And so I want to help uh, somebody. Hey, right. <laughs> but I want to um, celebrate him as being my pastor before I was able to uh, become a pastor. He was my pastor uh, before I got to Swift Street. And so I want to thank him even now for even traveling um, all the way from Greensboro, North Carolina, getting on a plane. <laughs> Amen. but he's a phenomenal prognosticator of the gospel. He's a practitioner of the text. And so I want you all to sit back and be praying, not only for the preacher, but pray for yourselves, because I didn't invite him, because um, I got to choose the preacher, amen. I, told, I was always taught that if you're going to invite somebody to preach, let it be, make sure it's the preacher you want to hear preach, amen. And so I, I've always kept that rule close to my heart, amen. I ain't tell the truth, shame the devil. Amen. And so he is my pastor and he is a phenomenal preacher and he's going to preach in this place. And I just need you to be in prayer with him, not only with him, but with me that I receive a word because pastors know every now and again, you got to refill and you have to take in the word as those who you preach to take in the word. Amen. And so I want you all to just stretch your hands for, towards this man of God. Say, Dr. Mitchell, you better preach. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Somehow, some way, we made it through. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, somehow, some way, we made it through. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Come on.
got to say somehow.
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Anybody celebrating survival tonight? I said, anybody celebrating survival tonight? You made it to Friday. Any survivors in the house? You survived the attack of the enemy. You, desire, you, des, you, you survived haters and detractors and obstruction. You survived demons and witches and hexes. You survived everything the devil tried to throw at you. The weapons that were formed did not prosper. Come on, point to yourself and say, I'm a survivor. I made it through. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Yes. Finally, I made it here before God called me home. I couldn't leave the earth until I got to St. Paul. Amen. And because of the set man of this house, it was worth the trip. I give God thanks. Give God praise for this fortuitous opportunity to be here with one of God's triumphant heralds. You know, we like to put titles on younger preachers and say they're rising stars. You no, know, I think he's a star. God has put him where God wants him to be. I give God thanks for your beloved pastor, my friend and colleague, former student, man of God. And I thank God for the first lady of this church. Now y'all looking around to say, who is the first lady? First lady of the church is Sister Marquita Newkirk. I started pastoring I was a single man just like him and whenever my mother would come and visit I would announce her as the first lady to remind all the folk I don't need no help finding he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and until then mama will do say amen God bless you. Beloved presiding elder of this, the Eastern Shore District, Reverend Dr. William E. Kelly, churchman of the highest order, and to his good wife and to my friend and colleague who I miss much, the Reverend Dr. David McClendon, and his good wife, Sister Tawana McClendon, came by conference last week they felt so much like home they brought a piece of home with them we're thankful for them to so these clergy persons the Reverend Dr. Lewis Watson who I know by reputation have followed his ministry over the years God bless you sir and it's good to be in your presence and to our liturgist tonight the Reverend Dequan Bimbo amen to all the preachers who are here and I see one of my daughters in the faith, the Reverend Darlene Counts. I'm going to say Darlene Counts for now, but you know I know you. Good to see you. Stand up, Reverend Darlene. It's good to see you. Amen. And to all of you, it's a joy. And to our connectional officer serves here in this church, Sister Melva Polk Wright. It's good to see you here tonight. Amen. I don't know what else to do because you all have heard word from the beginning till now. And so I can honestly say we can just go on home. Uh, but the pastor did not bring me all the way here to just enjoy good singing and praying. And so I've come to share a word with you. I have great affection for your pastor. I remembered when he entered the ministry and came to St. Stephen's Church and 
His pastor at the time was moved to the Western North Carolina Conference, the Reverend Enrico White, who sends his best. And he needed somewhere to go and needed someone to connect with. And I said, come on over here. Now, I didn't see much of him because every time I looked around, he was preaching somewhere. <laughs> so I, I did my best to give assignment, but he was always on assignment. Uh, but I saw the gift of God in him. And it doth not yet appear what God shall do in him and through him. And I believe that the appointment that was made to this congregation was divinely orchestrated. Amen. And your bishop who knows and hears the voice of God followed God's voice and assigned him. We cried when he left us, didn't we? Yes, they did. Yes, we did. Now, y'all know we live, right? But God has a way that's mighty sweet. And God orders our steps and our stops. And the beautiful thing about his ministry is that God is ordering it. And I say to you and anyone else, as was said to me, if God can't take you there, nobody can. And if they put you there, be careful. There have been those who put people in places and you worship the person who put you there more than the God who sent you there. And how many of you know if God plants you there, you'll grow wherever God plants you. The Bible says they that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Praise the Lord. Thank God for these musical aggregations who blessed us, these Levites from this church and First Baptist who blessed us in a tremendous way. Come on, let's thank God for them who blessed us tonight. I ask God what would be the substance of our sharing tonight and presiding y'all to God in good fashion sent me a text. He sent me a text. He sent me a text. And I invite your attention to the Old Testament book of Judges. Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. And I want to read the first eight verses of that passage for our time tonight. Judges chapter 7. Reading it from the New Revised Standard Version of the Hebrew Masoretic Text, here's what it says. Then Jerubal, that is Gideon, and all the troops that were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Harod. And the camp of Midian was north of them, below the hill of Moray in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, the troops with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand. Israel would only take the credit away from me, saying, my own hand has delivered me. Now therefore proclaim this in the hearing of the troops. Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him go home. Thus Gideon sifted them out. 22,000 returned and 10,000 remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, the troops are still too many. Take them down to the water and I will sift them out for you there. When I say this one shall go with you, he shall go with you. And when I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So he brought the troops down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, All those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps, you shall put to one side. And all those who kneel down to drink, putting their hands to their mouths, 
you shall put to the other side. The number of those that lapped was 300, but all the rest of the troops knelt down to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 that lapped, I will deliver you and give the Midianites into your hand. Let all the others go to the house. So he took the jars of the troops from their hands and their trumpets and sent them home. Sent all the rest of Israel back to their own tents, but retained the 300. The camp of Midian was below him in the valley. That's enough. I want to talk as the Spirit shall give utterance and unction from this thought. This is the word, I think, for you and for the house, Pastor. And a word for me as well. Let God take it from here. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. And lighten with celestial fire. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the story of Gideon has intrigued and inspired me in such a way that I'm confident that this narrative can speak perspicaciously to the space and time we occupy right now. If you moonwalk back to chapter 6, we find an interesting sequence of events and sights. We find the plight of the Israelite peasants mired in oppression and anguish. Rebellion is met with retribution as Israel is rebuked by the prophet for their disregard of the way and will of Yahweh. And yet in God's property to always have mercy upon God's people, an angelic emissary is dispatched to a village in the territory of Manasseh where we find a petulant, peevish farmer threshing wheat where wine is produced. A word of encouragement is met with a grumbling response of protest from Gideon. And the protest, Pastor, does not thwart nor contravene the promise and command given to the cowering Gideon. Gideon has issues, but God still wants to use him. Can I say that again? Gideon has issues, but God still wants to use him. Gideon has struggles, and those struggles are paramount because they deal with his own insecurity. Not only is he insecure, but he's inadequate. And yet God still sees value in him. So much so that God provides a meal and the meal becomes a miracle which gives the reluctant Gideon the inner courage to not only build an altar commemorating the peace God brings but to tear down the oppressive altar where his family worships and rebuilds an altar to God under the cover of night. Text reminds us that this directive is met with disgust as the word gets out that Lil Gideon has torn down the altar to Baal and raise an altar to Jehovah. Watch the movement in this narrative, friends. There's anguish in the village. God sees the anguish in the village and sends an angelic emissary to a fearful farmer. Can I push it? Altars are torn down and raised up. Adversaries come from without and within. An anointing and assurance is given to a reluctant farmer. And allies have been given to him in order to mobilize him to fight against the Midianites. I wish I had time to break all of that down, but all of us at some point or another, friends, have found ourselves in a place where we did not feel adequate. We had 
bouts with insecurity and in the midst of all that God still puts an assignment on your life he puts a mantle on your shoulders he he puts a passion in your heart he does not thwart nor contravene the promise because no matter how insecure and inadequate you might feel God says I can still use you in the midst of your insecurity do I have anybody who can testify that you've had some bouts with inadequacy and you didn't know whether or not you were suitable or adequate but God keeps using you not because you're good but God uses you because God is good I just need one or two folk who can testify you've struggled you've had bouts with fear and apprehension you've had skirmishes with doubt and dismay you've had duels with weariness and bitterness you've had tussles with timidity and trepidation you've had conflicts with consternation and shakiness and like Gideon you kept asking God to prove God's self and the reason why you asking God to prove God's self is because you were it about people ah uh, but if you ever get delivered from people and quit worrying about what people say and how people feel and what people gonna do and what she gonna say and what the tricksters are going to say god can move you from disgrace to amazing grace I ought to have a one or two witnesses that can bear witness that the saga of your life has been checkered with numerous incidents where your fear of retribution and recompense was stronger than your confidence in the never ending, never failing grace of a living and loving God. And it is out of this corpus that I seek to make this claim for this message. That there are times, Taekwon, Pastor, Friends, where God's direction for your life transcends the limits and boundaries of your own capacity to see and comprehend. And when such moments are presented to you, you and I must surrender to the invitation that God brings in order that God might bring something out of you in the place where success is inadequate and deficient. I wish I had time to pull over and keep the car running, but I got to keep pushing my way. It's almost nine o'clock, but this text helps us to appreciate a faith that can never be shaped by human feeling and opinion. This text lets me see that there's, there's a faith that God is trying to raise up in you that can never be developed by human approval. If you want God to take you higher, you can't let prominent personalities regulate your behavior. Can I push it plain? You can't let nobody determine the praise that you ought to give to God. I know there's some Negroes that whenever certain folk come around, they get all snooty and snobbish. They get all big in the head because certain people come around, they act all cute and funny. But after all the hell you've been through, after all the hell we've been through these last, am I the only one that survived COVID in here and you got your voice? You can breathe in and breathe out. And how dare you sit there and let somebody else calibrate your celebration? The devil is a liar. I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth Gideon has given God a ton of tests and every time he gives God a test God gives him assurance God gives him Dr. Watson anointing God gives him allies and God gives him an assignment Every time he throws something at God and tells God, I can't do it, God throws back assurance. God throws back an anointing. God gives him allies and God gives an assignment. I'm going to say it again. I feel it now. Every time he says to God, God, I'm not adequate for this. 
to quiet that court to go on god will send assurance god will send anointing god will send allies and then god sends an assignment now friends here is the paradox in this passage uh, because god does send all of that but then god does something strange and can I go in my Pentecostal bag and issue this word of prophetic witness? You ought to give God praise not for the people God gives. But you ought to thank God for the people God took. <laughs> Mac, I've grown now to the point where I don't cry about people that leave. Because in the Methodist parlance, when some folk leave, some folk come. And there's some folk that got to leave before other folk come. Can I push this? And there's some folk, First Lady Mac, that got to leave before God shows up. And the reason why there is such emptiness in our church is because we so, we so hungry for people that we don't have a hunger for God. And when your hunger is for people and you need people who you think gonna kiss up on you and you need people who go love on you and like you, you'll miss the God who's been your help in ages past and will be your hope for years to come. You ought to praise God for the people that didn't answer the text. You ought to praise God for the job offer you didn't get. You ought to praise God for the offer you turned down. You ought to praise God for the call that didn't come and the proposal you expected but didn't get it. You ought to praise God for the people that didn't support the venture. You ought to support, you know what? There's some folk that left, ain't showed up. I've been sitting there seeing my offering not go down but go up and just paid off a mortgage two years earlier and God told me that if you just do what I tell you I'll give you good measure press down shaken together and running over I'm the God that makes a way out of no way Gideon had troops but what Gideon would discover is that although you have quantity, you can't mistake quantity for quality. Has God ever said to you too much? Sometimes you can have too many people to be affected. Sometimes what we think is necessary to get the work done, Pastor, is too much. <laughs> Ah, you want and need more resources. And when you get them, you start worshiping them and not the God who gave them. Somebody say too much. We support, we want support from certain people. And when they give us what we want, the divine response from the throne room of God is too much. We want the creature comforts. And when we get the car and when we get the crib and when we get the cash, we hoard the cash, stay in the crib and wash the car on Sunday when we ought to be in God's house thanking God for the cash, the crib and the, ca and the commodity. Somebody say, too much I've discovered that whenever God says too much God is getting ready to show me something beyond my highest imagination and friends God sent me to tell you that if you let quantity determine your success you'll miss victory There is a difference, friends. I'm cutting across the field. Between success and victory. I've had, Darlene, some successes. And God let me know that my successes, Kelly, came because of my ingenuity. Came because of my little ability. Came because of my battery of energy. But Ramona, I've lived long enough now to know the difference between my success and God's victory. Can I push it? Dare I push it? 
when you didn't have what you thought you needed but you look back over your shoulder thank you praise leader because you helped me you thought you needed formula and God sent you favor that's greater than formula every time I filled up my gas tank yesterday and I was sitting there about to cuss and fuss but God said don't you know there's some Negroes and some folk who ain't got money to put in a gas tank and how dare you sit there with your sanctimonious nose and complain about me and what I've done in your life He says, he says, he says, he says three things in this text that I want to share with you and I'm finished. He says, it's time for me to go. It's time for us to go. He says, I'll take it from here when you realize that what you have is enough. Somebody say, that's enough. He says, that's, somebody say, that's enough. God says, that's enough. 300. He cuts his army by 99% and leaves him 1% to fight against an enemy that's too big for him. And God says, that's enough. <laughs> We're fighting a multitude that has oppressed us and we only have a fraction of a regiment. 300 Lord, that's enough. You sitting around here mad because you can't get folk to cooperate and you're, you're spitting on the very people who are there with you. I've been thanking God. I, yeah, it's not the house ain't full the way it was before COVID, but I'm thanking God for the 7,500 people that I have in church on Sunday morning because somehow or another, God knows how to take those pennies and put them together and prove to me that he is Jehovah Jehovah and he is my provider. That's enough! Gideon, I'm going to give you 300. Now don't you cry over that 300 because that's enough. Come on, somebody say, that's enough. That's enough. God can do more with less than you can with more. That's enough! But Taekwondo says something else. To Gideon and he says it to you because there have been times in our lives where we struggled with adequacy so not only does he say what you have is enough it's going to shout you it's going to shout you but, but, but my Melvin he says you're enough you've been comparing yourself to people and the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to people. I've grown, I've grown in my walk with God now that if being me ain't enough, being anybody else is too much. And you sitting there letting folk compare you to people. And I've had folk tell me who I look like. And I said, well, I hope the next time you see them, you tell them they look like me. Because I ain't trying to be like them. I can only be the only Darren Hernandez Mitchell. And is there anybody here who woke up this morning or when you get home tonight, you plan to look in the mirror and thank God for what God has done for you? You're not trying to be tall like anybody else. I ain't trying to be slim like nobody else. I ain't trying to preach like nobody else. I can't preach like Taquan. I can't say Sing like Taquan, but this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let, come on, tell somebody, I'm enough. You've let people tell you how inadequate you are, but this is the night that you get free from the opinions of Negroes and break yourself free from the soul ties you let consume and drain your spirit. You are now being set free because you are enough. You're enough, Gideon. You're enough, Taekwondo. You ain't got to be like nobody else. You ain't got to walk like nobody else. You ain't got to waste your time emulating anybody who's not following Jesus. I tried to preach like certain folk. And I discovered preaching like them negated and nullified the authentic voice that God gave me. 
And I decided I'm going to be the best me. And if I'm going to fail, I'd rather fail being me than succeed being you. You got 300, Gideon. That's enough. I called you. You're enough. And when I get through going before you and preparing you and propelling you, you'll look back on this experience and you'll testify God was more than enough. Come on, tell somebody, let God take it from here. Ah, you got to remember, you can't make this on your own. God has to be in front of it. God has to go before you. And I dare somebody when you leave here tonight to quit worrying about what's ahead of you and start thanking God for the one who goes before you. Because your God goes before you, you can never be defeated. I'm going to my seat now, but can I find one or two witnesses who can testify that during this pandemic and this pandemonium that we've survived for 402 years, that God has been with us. God has proven to you that he can take little and make it much. Come here, David. I'm going to give you five stones. That's enough. I'm going to give you a slingshot and an anointing. That's your enough. I'm going to give you victory over a nine foot giant and a paranoid king. Because I'm more than enough. Let God take it from here. Come here. Come here, Daniel. I'm giving you a lion's den. That's enough. I'm going to put you in the den with hungry lions. You're enough. I'm going to step in and lock their jaws because I'm more than enough come on let God take it from here come here Moses I'm giving you a staff that's enough I'm giving you an assignment with a stutter because you're enough I'm going to send plagues I'm going to open a highway in the waterway I'm going to bring water out of a rock because I'm more than enough let God take it from here. Come here, Harriet. I'm going to give you a pistol. That's enough. I'm going to put you on the Underground Railroad. You're enough. I'm going to have you lead 300 slaves to freedom because I'm more than enough. Let God take it from here. Come here, Carver. I'm going to give you a peanut. That's enough. I'm going to give you creativity and innovation. You're enough. And I'm going to give you over 500 uses for that peanut. Because I'm enough. Let God take it from here. Come here, Taekwon. I'm going to have you born in Leland. And somebody going to ask, what's in Leland? And they're going to say, Taekwon Austin, the son of Marquita. Because that's enough. I'm going to lift you up and send you to Livingstone because you're enough. I'm going to give you your first church before you have your deacon's orders. And folk going to look at you and wonder how did you get it. They're going to look at you and say what did you do to make this happen. And you look at them and tell them I'm enough. That's enough. But God is more than enough. I can't stop there. But come here, Jesus. I'm going to put you in a body. That's enough. I'm going to give you a man named Joseph to be your earthly father. And a woman named Mary to be your mama. You're enough. I'm going to put you in Nazareth. And Nathaniel's going to ask, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? But that's enough. And you're enough. They're going to hang you high and drop you low. Can I go there? They're going to hang your head in the locks of your shoulders. But that's all right. You'll stay in a grave. 
for three days. Come on, come on, I got a Baptist in here. But early, early, early Sunday morning, I'm going to pick you up and raise you up because I am enough. Look at somebody as I close for the first time and say, neighbor, I'm going to let God take it from here. Have you any mountains that you think are uncrossable? And have you any rivers that you can't tunnel through? God, I say God specializes in things which seem impossible and he will do what no other power can do have i got a witness come on throw your head back and say i'm enough look at your hands and say that's enough and then look over your shoulder and say god is enough how did you make it how did you get here somebody help me preach it through many dangers toys and snares i have already come grace 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 has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me on can i close it mac can i close it i've had some good days i've had some hills to climb i've had some weary days and i've had some sleepless nights but when i look around when i look around somebody look around and think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days and i i i, I said i i won't complain god 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 has been good say it yeah. say it yeah. say it yeah. yes he has and he didn't bring you this far to leave you now so go on and praise him go on and thank him thank him for what he's done thank him for every mountain he's brought you over thank him for every trial he's brought you through thank him Thank him. Thank you. Oh, yeah. He will. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. I'm trying to quit, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my my soul cries out hallelujah 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 yeah 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 Come on, let God, I said, let God take it from here. Let God, I'm trying to quit, Pastor, but let God take it from here. And if God takes it from here, that means he already knows what's over there. So while I'm here, I'm going to praise him while I'm here. I'm going to dance until I get there. I ain't going to wait until I get there to give God praise. But I will. Yes, I will. I'm going to praise him there. I'm going to praise him here as I get ready for there. So I need two or three people 
who don't mind praising God here and praising God now before you get to there before you get to that praise God here praise God here praise God here right here right here right here right here because God is able because God is able God is able to take you from here. Let God take you from here. Everybody standing on your feet. Oh my God. I don't know where here is for you. And I don't know what there looks like for you. But if God got you here, oh my God, he'll take you there. Pastor, if he can't take you there, can't nobody take you there. If he brought you here, he'll take you there. Because I believe in the God of somehow. Somebody shout somehow. Come on, somebody shout somehow. Some way, things are going to work out. Oh my God, my God. Things are going to work out. I don't know how it's going to work. But I believe the God who brought me here and the God who brought you here will take you there. And don't you go there without him. Everybody's standing. Somebody thank God right now for where you are right now. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Thank God for where you are. And you see, Taekwon. I've had shade tree prophets tell me what I should have done at a certain time and said to me, if you had done that then, you'd be in a different place now. It's not about the place being different. It's about you being better. And there are some places others wanted you to be that God didn't want you to be. And I thank God for closed doors. Every open door is not a divine opportunity. And God opened the door. We cried in Greensboro. But one thing we were sure of, his steps were ordered. I stopped trying Taekwondo to fit in when I discovered that I already belong. You'll get it when you get home. And when you belong, you ain't got to fit in unless you're trying to please people. When you belong to him and you know who you are and whose you are, you ain't got to work it together. God will work it together. Do I have a witness in here? And Matt, he'll do it in his own time. And I believe that when God's time and your turn connect, that's when Kairos happens. And Somebody's right now at a Kairos moment. And you've been watching your watch more than you've been watching God's word perform in your life. Come on, I'm, I'm going to my seat. Stretch those hands in the air where, wherever you are. God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for a divine dispensation of strength and courage, power and purpose to fall on this house and on every person in this house right now. And whatever you have for them, whatever you have for them, what you have for them, God, you'll give them clear vision for it. And even when there are people around who are closed-minded and can't see the clear vision, I pray in the name of Jesus that not only will you send vision, but you'll send clarity for the vision. 
Thank you for closure, God. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives to clear the path right now. I speak it right now in this house. Somebody begin to open your mouth and thank God for it. Come on, open your mouth and thank God for what God is doing. He's releasing power for you. And where you're weak, he will be strong. Thank you, Lord. As we are here, get us ready for there. As we stand in now, get us ready for next. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Come on, give God praise in the building. Listen. You may be seated. Somebody's here tonight. Before I, I carry out what pastors ask. Somebody here tonight, you may not be, you're not saved. If you're here and you're watching, you may not be saved. God wants to take your now and prepare you for your next. And for some, the first step is salvation. You need to be saved. If you're here, you're not saved. Get out there, see, come on down here, get saved. There's some great houses of worship here in Salisbury, Maryland. But you ought not go to that house if you're not saved. You've never given your life to Christ. Come on, say yes to him. Or if you're in a place of salvation, you have a relationship with the Lord Christ, but you need a church. Listen, you've got to be planted if you're going to grow. I don't want to take for granted that everybody in the house that's celebrating is properly connected. So if you're not saved, come on. Come on, come on, come on. You can say that there's a, there was a short preacher from Greensboro who was tall in the robe he wore that led you to Christ. You're here tonight. Come on, come on. Move out of your seat. Meet me right here if you're here. If you're here. If you're here. Give God praise for a saved house and a connected house. pastors asked me to do this and I'm going to, to do this some hand sanitizer we still in COVID y'all Samuel went to Jesse's house. And Jesse brought all the boys that were in the house. Because he thought that the next king was going to come from the house. Something happened, Pastor Watson, when Samuel took the horn of oil and the oil wouldn't flow because the head wasn't right. We can't celebrate, Samuel says, until, until we get the, the right head. The right head can begin the celebration. The right head can lead Israel into victory and propel them into their future. But it has to be the right head. So, Sam, God told Sam, wait a minute, you're looking at the wrong thing. You're looking at the stature, you're looking at the lineage and the pedigree. No, I'm looking at the heart. So, where you at? You got somebody? There's a little red boy outside. He talks to sheep and he sings to sheep outside in the meadows. He said, bring him here. Bring him here. As soon as he got in, that oil started flowing out of that horn. Because it flowed on the right head. We've been crying about bad leadership. And then when God anoints and sends good leadership and great leadership, we want to put them through all these tests. Let's see if you'll pass this test. I still got folk at Trinity Church who think I'm going to mess up, and I've been there 10 years. I said, I ain't trying to drown in shallow water. Listen. God has anointed you 
And I know, like me, you don't feel adequate. Who, me? Yes, you. And you don't have to look like anybody else or do it like anybody else. Marquita, you come to my office and we talk. I ain't going to tell his business, but we talk. One thing I will say. I said to him, Taekwon, you know, there are some people who are musicians who happen to be preachers. You get that. They're musicians who happen to be preachers. But you're a preacher who happens to have the gift of a minstrel. But Doc, they always got me singing. I know. They always got me singing. Somebody called, somebody called the office, asked to speak to the pastor of Trinity Amy Zion Church, Dr. Kelly. And I thought they were asking me to come and bring a message and preach or run revival. A woman called me and said, I want you to come sing for my birthday party. And you know, dumb me, I was going to try to find a way to get there. But my wife had something we were told to do, so I, but I was going to go. Because I figured if she called me to minister in that way, I owe it to her and to those in that space. Because you do know, whenever God was getting ready to make a shift in the life of Israel, he always put the singers out front. Whenever a battle was coming... And, and singers were designed to prepare the army for war. And so I said, well, all right, I'll go sing. You know, folk had me singing all the time. And I said, they're saying, I can do more than sing. But thank God for the gifts. And the one gift that God has given. Beyond your ability to play. Is your ability to lead. And serve. And so... Pastor, I'm anointing you not for where you are, but for where God is going to take you. You don't feel adequate, and that's good, because God has placed a treasure inside of you. I pray that God ever keep you, that his anointing will rest on you and bring you the peace, settle your spirit and your mind and your heart, that what you didn't have growing up, like many of us, God was a father for you. I lost my daddy at eight years old. I told you that. God raised up folk around me. Raised up Bill Kelly's and Dave McClendon's and folk I watch. And God raised them up to show me I'll take care of you. And in the name of Jesus, I speak over your future, oh, oh God, I speak over your future. That you will walk with God all the days of your life. And as your steps go higher, you'll go deeper as you bless nations, as you bless the world. And may, oh God, you know God brought you and that God kept you. May you know that God gave you the strength and will be your strength from now until in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Somebody give God some praise for the work. 
for the word. Amen. Amen. And for this wonderful celebration. Amen. We're going to invite the honoree back up to give some last uh, remarks. Amen. Were there any remarks from St. Paul? I know there will be uh, refreshments in the fellowship hall immediately after this celebration. Amen. Were there any other announcements? Amen. We're going to have Pastor Austin come up for last rem um, remarks, and then we'll give the benediction back to Dr. Mitchell at that time. Let's give God some praise for the Reverend Doctor, well, soon to be Taekwon Lamar Austin. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I won't be long. I know the hour is late. Um, I just want to thank God for um, bringing me this to this point in life um, and in ministry, and I have to let this be known. It was this day exactly 10 years ago at some of Amy Zion Church that I preached for the first time. United we stand and divided we fall. And for those who don't know, my, my favorite scripture is Romans 8.28. For we know all things even the loss of my father at five years old, all things. And I'll sing it until my last breath. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner than later. Oh, sooner or later, it's going to work in my favor, yeah. Woo. It's turning around. St. Paul, it's turning around. We're taking things to the next level. And that means we got to let God take it. It wasn't easy leaving Leland to go to Livingstone because I'm a mama's boy. Um, it wasn't easy graduating and the same night I graduated had called the bishop at 9 o'clock on the dot. Asked me this one question, are you ready to pass? And my response was, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Didn't know by the end of that same month, I would get sent to the sweet Swift Street AME Zion Church on 4408 Swift Street, Greensboro, North Carolina. Stayed there five years. The number of grace. Because I sure enough needed God's grace. I was on the school bus, got a FaceTime call. Call Bishop Moore now. Got the invitation and asked me, well, did I mind moving further away from my mama, further away from my family, further from my comfort zone? Everybody I knew, my resources, I could move. I knew people and people knew me to come to a place in the metropolis city of Salisbury, Maryland at 410 Delaware Avenue. And I thank God for every hill and valley I've had to cross. Every lie, every rumor, every person that talked behind my back and smiled in my face. Every sermon I preached and every sermon I messed up. I thank God that I'm still here. And it's only by the grace of God. Now, if you would indulge me for the next 30 seconds... I told Pastor Bimbo, you ain't the only one that has a dance. You ain't the only one that can give God praise. You ain't the only one that knows how to shout hallelujah and speak in tongues. Because when God sent me to 410 Delaware Avenue, I came with praise in my lips and thanksgiving in my heart. And so for the next 30 seconds, musicians, I just need you to indulge me for the next 30 seconds. Don't mind me. This is between me and God.
keep that going. We're going to go out and praise. Come on. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, slipping, and stumbling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And the people of God said, God bless you. God keep you. Good night.